thought my career, I had to laugh a little bit. I said, which, which, which one? Because I think I'm on my fifth career. So you are all young and you're just getting started. And I'm not young. I'm not just getting started. So I thought, well, if you don't mind just kind of going on a journey with me through my life of career to get to where I am today. Because you were saying, you know, tell us a little bit about why you love doing what you do as a life coach and then how you got to this point. So how many of you in this room are older than 19? Yeah, okay. All right, so I was married at 19. Wow, <laughs> wow. So my husband and I, you know, I had to kind of do my education and my career path already married. And so um, this is, you know, picture, we're back in the 1980s, and the 1980s was a big Silicon Valley thing. And so I was, yeah, even though in high school I'd always really been good at math, that was kind of favorite subject and good grades, but really my absolute favorite subject in high school was psychology. But being in the 1980s and being in Silicon Valley, my husband and I talked about it, and we thought he was a mechanical engineer, and I thought, well, I should really do something with computers and technology. So my first degree is a, just a two-year degree in computer information systems. And I love logic, I love programming, I love kind of that reasoning skills that it takes to do that. But um, I ended up being actually a software instructor for Digital Equipment Corporation, which doesn't exist anymore, because Digital Equipment Corporation, I sort of brought a photo of what the computers were like. They were big deck, exactly, back in the day. And deck had the, you know, the big computers that were, you know, filled the entire room with cooling system and all of that. And the president of Digital Equipment Corporation said, personal computers, why would people want a computer in their home? Which is why Digital Equipment Corporation does not exist. But at the time, I was a software instructor for that. But what I really loved, actually, I discovered was people. I loved working with people, and I loved watching the light bulb go off when people were learning something new and taking a frustrating, confusing subject and turning it into a successful learning experience. So I did that for quite a few years, and then my first daughter was born. And after working and you know, being the working mom and trying to juggle all that in the 80s, I realized I really can't do both. And my husband and I decided that I would go ahead and stay home and be a full-time classroom mom. And so I called it through two. <laughs> and that one, honestly, was the most challenging and yet rewarding career of everything I've seen so far. So I love that experience, but in order to be able to afford living here, I thought I need to maybe do something work-related and keep that career mind going. And so I actually opened a database company that I could do from home. So I could be a database consultant and do a lot of the work from home, and I ended up being able to not only hire other women who wanted to be able to work at home as well, but eventually our daughters got old enough that they both were able to work for me. So I did that for 23 years. Wow. Uh, just being able to work from home and juggle that. But um, as I did that, I thought, I mean, Phil, I love psychology. I love learning about why people do what they do. So I thought, you know, that dream has never gone away. And my husband said, you might as well go back and get a degree in it because you're using it on all the time anyway. So I'm psychoanalyzing the family. So I went back, as my daughters were teenagers, I went back to San Jose State and got a degree in psychology and child development. And um, with that, I was thinking, all right, what will my next step be? And I uh, you know, kept the database stuff going. And then when my girls were in college, I got accepted to Stanford to do a master's in international comparative education. Because again, it was that passion for people and education. We had started getting to travel in different locations, and so I really loved studying other cultures and experiencing the, the people, the food, the family of origin, background, and so on. So I thought, hey, this is it. I'm going to do this new career path, and I'm going to start working for nonprofit organizations. So my thesis for Stanford was actually to do a program evaluation on um, faith based uh, education programs, non-profit education programs in India. And so I got to go to India, and I think you were asking about India, that's when I got to go to Hyderabad and go out into the villages and do program evaluations on these educational systems set up for Dali children so that they could gain an educational background. And so I came home, and this was, when I graduated in 2007, and this was it. This is what I could do. But my husband got offered the chance to uh, 
uh, have us move to Germany for a year and a half with his company. And we always wanted to do that too, to not just travel, but to actually live in another country and experience what it would be like in that culture. So I only had two years of high school German. No idea why I took that in high school because you know, I never get to use it. So we went to Germany and started trying to learn the language. And that was a fantastic experience because our, our daughters were able to come over from college and other friends and did really get to live that experience. But when I came back to the United States, we moved back after a year and a half, and what had happened in 2008 here in the United States, the economy went down a lot. So nonprofits weren't hiring, so that dream that I had at that point you know, was not going to be able to move forward. So I started doing a consulting position for Valley Christian School nearby, uh, working with a program out of Stanford called Challenge Success. And challenge success is something that has Stanford developed to work with high schools and colleges across the United States to really look at what is happening with today's youth being pressured into uh, a societal norm of success that not everybody can live. Not everybody is uh, capable of doing a full university education, uh, and yet we're all assuming that everybody should fit in this one particular mold and that that's what we call success. So uh, working with that program, what we were doing is kind of taking a look at all of the stress that's on kids today. You are all coming from different countries, so I don't know how you experience education in the U.S., but it's very different from what I saw, you know, 30 and 40 years ago. So what we're seeing now is high levels of stress, anxiety, depression is on the rise, suicide is on the rise, so this pressurized system that everybody's got to get into the right preschool when you're three, so that you can get into the right elementary school, so that you can have the best education, so that you can get into the perfect college, so that you can have the perfect degree, so that you can have the perfect career, so that you can be perfectly happy. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. And that's what everybody is starting to realize, is that there, that isn't a, a way to actual health and success. So that balance is way out of out of whack in today's culture here. So, um, where did I get this? So what that led to is trying to study what I would be able to do using the psychology background and child development and its international education and be able to look at what I call now career five, I can include a few of those on the way. Uh, but I went back to school one more time because in working with students today, I was realizing it was the entire family unit that we're having to deal with. Just trying to address student issues and kind of help us not address the parent issues that are putting the pressure on the students to be who they are. And we've got to look at the school issues and we've got to look at the societal pressures that have changed over time. And so I went back and this time I got a, a certification in life coaching. And life coaching is different from counseling. So my psychology background, in order to be able to practice with that, I would need another master's degree and 2,500 hours of um, licensed work or a PhD. And I thought, okay, at that point I was in my 40s, so I doing that. Now I'm in my 50s. I thought I really didn't want to do that, but I love learning. I just feel like I, I love learning what's new, what's the latest in research, and how you would apply that. So uh, I went and got that certification process and started adding up the hours in order to be certified. And now what I do is I work with family units. Uh, I do some individual coaching and some career coaching, but a lot of times what I do are parenting classes and then working with family units to kind of unravel the snarl of dynamics that are happening within a family system. And we're, you know, the divorce rate in the U.S. is really high, so I don't have all the staff on each of your countries, but the divorce rate is skyrocketing in the U.S., and that, of course, creates an entire damage family structure where the kids are not only feeling all the pressure to be successful and the education pressure, but they're also balancing between the two homes and a lack of stability that, that used to be a norm that isn't a norm anymore. 